there's an election on and people are talking politics. So what happens when you send two people with opposing views on a lunch date? I'm well nervous. I'm like, oh my God, this has been so long. <laughs> Literally. Will sparks fly? You see people that are sat there that can go and work and choose not to. They choose to go and sign on. It, it angers me. Okay. Or will things hot up? You look gloriously distinguished. Right, hit me with Slightly it. hunky. Um, You're quite a pretty lady. <laughs> You know, we get that on camera. And will the political? When people stand at the dispatch box and tell me there's more money in education, I look around and I wonder where it's gone because it's not in my children's school. Get personal. Well, what are you going to do? Snogger. No, so, well, that's that, 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 yeah. Well. Hi, I'm Rachel Johnson. How would people best know you? Oh, that's such a mean question. <laughs> I think I've probably got to admit that they think of me as sister of Boris, which is annoying, but I have to accept it. And I am a journalist. I did join the Tories, uh, but only for a few years. I've joined the Lib Dems. I'm very concerned that we, we don't just go off a cliff willy-nilly in terms of Brexit, because I'm thinking about my children and grandchildren, I hope. I'm waiting for grandchildren. Not long now, I hope. <laughs> I was anxious it was going to be Michael Gove. I was told it was someone who was active in the Brexit campaign, so I'm worried it could be possibly Douglas Carswell. He regards me with utter disdain, so that would be interesting. It would be great fun if it was Nigel Farage, but he would drink me under the table. And I've got to play a tennis match after lunch, <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm Nigel Farage, I was in business for 20 years, I was never involved in politics at all, so I gave up quite a normal life to dedicate myself to what was considered to be fringe politics, sort of, you know, loony tunes. What I do know is I'm meeting a fanatical Remainer. I know it's a woman, I hope she likes to drink. What if I don't know who he is? Will I know who he is? Hello, May Nigel. I introduce you <laughs> to your... How about that? <laughs> That's amazing. To your day. Oh, you. <laughs> Hello, you. You well? Very well, thank Good. you. Take a seat, Mr yeah. Farage. Take a seat. <laughs> yes. And I am your waitress for the day. Oh, wow. Before we get into your date, yeah. what tell us what do you think of this man from what you know of him? Oh, you see, the problem with Nigel is he's impossible not to adore. <laughs> He's an abs He's completely destroyed the country. He's turned the Tory party <clears throat> into Conkip, but I like him an awful lot, and I think he's a brilliant communicator. And Mr Farage, what yeah. do you think of Rachel Johnson just, from your meeting so far? Huge fun. Um, and clearly deluded on this particular issue, but, but I think, you know, over perhaps a glass or something at lunch, we can talk some sense into that. <laughs> but, uh -huh. <laughs> Good luck with that, Nigel. Well, we'll have a go. <laughs> well, are you single, Nigel? <laughs> That's a very good question. A lot of people are asking that question. I'm not very married at the moment, let's put it like that. You're not very married. No. Well, I am married. No, I know you are. Yeah. <laughs> I know you are. But it's good to get the, to know <laughs> yeah. each other's status yeah. before we embark yeah. on this date. Yeah, I think separated is my yeah, really? legal status. How yeah, do you feel are. about that? Uh, I don't think... I don't think anything would have survived what I've been doing for the last five years, frankly. I mean, not that I've been perfect, but, well, I'm not, but, but it's been pretty awful. It's been pretty awful. I mean, just hellish, really. Are you talking about work and infidelity, or...? No, 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 I'm talking about the sheer nastiness and aggro that comes with this. That the whole Trotskyite hard-left movement are now the Remainers. But that's not the reason for so, your marriage so, breakdown. So, so, oh, Apparently, whole... we're called hard Remainers now. Hard Remainers. Hard Remainers. Yeah, I mean, you literally have... There is no yeah. life left. The last time I went out with a family, we were assaulted by 80 people. The You're not off. serious. That's the last time we went out as a family. Do you have any security now? Uh, yes, that I have to pay I'll for. get you Oh, drinks. thank you. No help but from you the police. you have to pay for No help from the state. No, nothing. So you literally never go out. That's awful, Nigel. That's the truth of it. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Yeah. I 
have a theory, which is this, actually, non I don't think people cared about Project Fear. I don't think people care that the Eurozone is going to boom and we're going to go off a cliff. I honestly think that it's become an ideology and all they want is to say, we've got our country back without really knowing no, or the ideology, what that means. The ideology is to lie to two dozen countries in Europe, to tell them they're joining an economic club and then bit by bit, to take away their democracy and their independence. That's the that's the that's the ideology. The ideology is the flag, the anthem, the police You're force, the army. You're talking about democracy, Nigel. Why yeah. doesn't why can't Parliament have a proper look at the eventual deal? Don't you think that's quite because important? Because Parliament, Parliament subcontracted this decision to the British people. Thank God. Had it been left to politicians, but we have a parliamentary democracy. This well, is not like... democratic. What's happening? I still don't understand why you think the deal was bad, Nigel. Because well, 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 can well, I just put my case? Yeah. Just, just from my, yeah. from where I sat and before we had Brexit, is we weren't in Schengen. The Thank Euro goodness. We weren't in the euro. So, we weren't in the social chapter. To me, it was a win-win so that we instantly things, converted the good into about a lose-lose. The, the bits we weren't in. <laughs> it's bizarre. Yes, but we had the best of both worlds then. I'm not sure we did actually. But didn't we? Well, thank God we didn't join the euro. Just give me two minutes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Quick phone, mate. Did you take our order? Yes. Where's, Where's he gone? gone? I think he may have gone to the gents. Do you think I've upset him already? Where is he? I don't know, but he's deserted you. He's deserted. Shall we ring him? Send a search party for Nigel Farage. Where is he? Aha, he's back. Sorry, sorry, I had to sort something out. Right. You had a cigarette, I can smell it. Well, I did, although I was on the phone, yeah, of course. I've got to say, actually, considering that you're on opposite sides of the... EU argument, this is a bit of a loving. <laughs> well, well I... it's, always, it's, been, it's always had this chemistry with Nigel. I can't help it. <laughs> but, I, but there are lots of Remainers, aren't you? Lovely, but there are lots of Remainers <laughs> I like anyway. What I can't stand are the British politicians who've been so dishonest about this subject all the way through the years. You know, Tories standing... At, uh... Who can't you stand, particularly? Who couldn't you sit down and have lunch with? Oh, the people who... Thank you. The people who used to masquerade as Eurosceptics in elections but were actually for it. Like who? Well, nearly all of them. Nearly all of them. You know, I mean, the referendum in the end did sort people out. Sorry, I couldn't help overhearing your earlier conversation about potentially thinking about standing for the European Parliament if Britain is not out of, well, if we're not out. Out of the European Union I'll by 2019. I'll stand against you. No, I'll great, stand against you. <laughs> is this confirmation that if Britain is not out by 2019, you're both going to stand as yes. your own? Yes, okay. yeah, yeah. Unless, of course, I, I can find myself a seat somewhere else. Right. So you if would fancy going... In a by-election. <laughs> right. You would fancy a seat in this country at Westminster. You've tried to be an MP seven times? I don't, I don't know, whatever it is. But I mean, Will that you was, have another go? But that was my duty to stand. My duty was to stand. I mean, only, only have but a... would you do it again? Would you want to become an MP? Would you try... Are you going to try again? Not particularly. I never did. Why really. not? Why not, though? Uh, because I wasn't in politics for that. I was in politics to try and change things. Oh, there you are. There's your brill. Oh, this looks delicious. Thank you very much. What would your um, brother Boris Johnson think of this date? I think he'd be very happy. I think that he would. He would. Slightly... He'd be very happy. You were on the same side. We were. In the but 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 not very friendly. Let's be honest. We weren't unfriendly. And what does your brother think about you joining the Liberal Democrats ahead I of this election? Takes, I think he takes a very dim view. But I have reassured him that it is a, for me. It's a single issue. Um, decision and it's for this election and I want to, you know I reserve my right to do whatever I like um, in perpetuity basically I'm a free agent oh, absolutely. I'm allowed to have a different political opinion <laughs> yes you are <laughs> but your problem Rachel is this <laughs> excuse me that I'm waiting for this you got today says 45% what brexit at any price you know walk away tomorrow Two fingers up, go. Yeah, and I think that is a problem, because it sounds so stupid. It's like vandalism. 23% want Brexit to happen, but would like a good deal. Yeah. And the hardcore Remainers I know. are now 22%. I know, I know, I know. And, and you are a shrinking We're hard Remainers. I know we are. I absolutely accept that. What I don't understand 
is what is so good about this European project. What is it that you're in love with? Why do you feel so strongly about it? I feel so strongly about it because what I feel is, is that Leaving aside what's good about it, the fact that we've had peace and security and prosperity, we have well, for yeah, 40 but, but, whatever but, but there it is years. reasons for that. Yes, OK, but one of them is we are part of the EU and it has kept peace in Europe. So are you saying no, wait, without wait, wait. the EU that no, the well, Germans would have invaded again? <laughs> Are you really saying that? Not at all. And I think that because of, but because of the EU, the Germans have been a real force for stability in Europe and an engine of growth. Ah. Anyway, it's nice to see you. Should we you. talk about something else now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Could you go to bed with a Romainer? <laughs> Could you make her see the light? Do you know what? I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you only attracted to Brexiters? <laughs> no, no, no. That's a good question. He can't. He hasn't. He has no words. <laughs> God, I'm, I'm on that. I must ask if the story about you meeting someone on a plane is true. Oh yes. What happens on true? the plane? Just a ridiculous setup. You are snogging this pastry model. Just ludicrous, the whole thing. But pastry model. I hope model, someone's got video for Page three it. model would have been okay, wouldn't it? Well, a bit more serious than that. What was she um, doing in business class, though? That's a very good question. Good question. Anyway, I just. Were you stitched up like a you kipper? A you kipper, yeah. What what that episode shows me is you can't trust anybody. You can't talk to anybody. You can't, you know. Oh God, Nigel, that's awful. It's true. I don't think you can tr tr trust random people, though. No, no, that's, no. that's the truth. And that was my, you know. Yeah. You know, there I was, sitting up, sitting at the bar, having dinner on Virgin Atlantic, and someone comes and sits next to you and starts talking to you. Well, what are you going to do? Snogger. No, well, that's that, that, that. Yeah, well. <laughs> what you need, Nigel, is just a nice, steady Brexiter girlfriend. <laughs> what? Because <laughs> then you don't have to have the conversation with her all the time you've had with me is like saying I just don't understand why you feel so strongly over dinner well, to her I think when you should be exchanging <laughs> sweet nothings <laughs> and you know you're both on the same page you both want out you I both still, think I the still, European project is disgusting I still don't get why you feel so strongly about this because I mm, grew up in Brussels I've fine. worked in Brussels I genuinely so I mean, do you want a United States of Europe wrong with it I like what we had, Nigel, and I don't want to lose it. Cameron, I think, probably did as much to lose a referendum as anybody else. Well, the deal was rubbish. The deal wasn't good yeah. enough. Yeah. And so Cameron, I hold it almost entirely responsible for this, more than you. Do you? Yeah. Well, I was disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we went over the waterfall in a bucket, he left Downing Street with a song in his heart. Well, he had to, didn't he? He had to go, didn't he? Do you think we're allowed pudding? Do so. you like pudding? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm fine. Coffee, maybe. Um, so, what do so, you do to relax, Nigel? Well, over the last 20 years, not much, which is why I'm pleased to be it's out of it. It's sad that your private life's fallen apart. Because well, you've done it in a, for, for a noble cause. 53, separated, skint. Yeah, great. Why are you skint? 20 years of doing this. Why don't you could go back into business, but you can't now. Loads of kids. You are Nigel Farage, that's the problem. Yeah, it's difficult. You've got three, haven't you? Four. Four? Yeah. Same wife? No, 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 no. <laughs> so. How many mothers? Only two, all right. <laughs> so you've been married twice? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Come on, Nigel, you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't no. complain. I'm not You've complaining. got what you want. I mean, I'm Nigel not, Car no. Douglas Carswell's fantastically smug about what's happened. Smug. He's one of the unhappiest people I've ever met. Is he? He doesn't. He, I think he's a very, unha very unhappy person. Yeah. Very strange individual. Very strange. He's clever. Is he? He doesn't have your ability to connect with people. Odd bloke. And then politics is full of odd people. I used to play golf. The other big hobby that I've got, which used to be considered to be really geeky, I mean really geeky. Metal detecting. <laughs> no. Can, um, I, can I guess? Have a guess. But you're um, sort of... Carriage driving. No. Okay. Um, 
Is it sporty? No, it's, it's historical. Um, brass rubbing. <laughs> no, no. OK, Thank am you. I close? Thank you. Not really. OK, Not really. what is it? Oh, I'm a First World War nut. Ah, oh, yes. An absolute nut. Nigel, what should I do with the rest of my life? It's what a big you, question. What do you want to do? I don't know. I think I'm bloody swimming against the tide at the moment. Oh, you'll lose this one completely. Mm. Uh, but that's OK, because we all have a few losses in life. Yeah. What do you want to do? I just wonder if I've Seems made a terrible mistake as well. I think you do pretty well, actually. <laughs> so it doesn't matter that I'm the butt of ridicule from half the Cabinet. <sighs> For joining the Lib Dems. Yes. Well, back mean, to politics, I see. No, no, sorry, sorry. No, no, it wasn't politics, actually. No, no, I'm no. Sorry. I was asking Nigel what I should do the rest of my life and have, wow. I, have I dropped a massive b****. Meaning, why, what, saying you're joining the Lib Dems? Well, yes, yeah. I mean, have I actually destroyed any hope of any no, but we're all serious all allowed, but we're all allowed a few mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> How would you sum up your political first date? Oh, I... I it's really interesting because... <clears throat> Rachel is seen in this country as being this sort of hard-line Remainer, and yet when you talk to her about the European Union and where it's going, in France she'd be a hard-line yeah, Eurosceptic. I think that's right, but so I mean, it's, it's, there it's, are so it's, few it's strange... of us left, though, even <clears throat> hard-line... Anyway. You know, had she told me that she supported the United States of Europe and everything else, I would completely understand why she sacrificed her reputation <laughs> to join the Liberal Democrats. As it is, I'm bemused, <laughs> but fascinated. Have, do you think you have sacrificed your reputation? I felt, I really genuinely felt, as this was, we were entering into a one-party state on an issue that I care, I think, I believe to be the to be wrong in every particular. I felt that I couldn't actually live with myself unless I'd made a futile gesture and stand up and be counted, if, if only to be shot down. Yeah. And how would you sum up your political first date with Nigel Farage? Well, as, like Nigel Farage, incredibly entertaining and infuriating. <laughs> <laughs> and wrong. <laughs> and wrong. <laughs> so how was your date? I enjoyed it. He's taught me a lot. I've turned her into a federalist. Apparently. Yeah, after lunch with Nigel Farage, I've gone from a, a what would they call a Eurosceptic in France to a full-blown federast. You want a European army? Yeah, why not? Oh, Roll it, bring it on. Dear idea. Well, at least it's well, a actually more we honest... can't afford a European army, but apart from that, it's if we're a more going to... honest position, though, isn't it? Because there's no point joining the Lib Dems. Ten years time, and we're going to have another dinner date, and we're going to see whether it's been the great success that you hope for, and I hope for too, because I want things to work. Well, in ten years' time, the European Union won't exist anyway, so it'll be a different conversation. I don't think you're right. I'll take your hand on that, though. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for a lovely lunch. No, it's great fun. I loved it. Should we get up to the cigar? Yeah, do you want a cup of coffee?